Hello everyone, Father Bob Gross. It is uh, 757. Get ready for our evening update. Hope everyone's doing well and uh, welcome. And uh, we'll start here in a few moments. Just want to get on here so people can get on. Okay. Welcome to everyone. Good evening. Hi, Anne. Hello, Pat. Hello, Denise, Ellen, Norma. Good to see everybody. Carla, Phi, Teresa. We'll start right at 8 o'clock, everybody. Hey, Bill, Marianne, Janice. Hi, Lori and Mike. Hi, Ruth. We'll start at 8 o'clock. Shane, good to see you. It was a nice day. Hi, Elaine. Shirley. We'll start in a few moments. Paula, hello. Yeah, we'll talk about the day in a few moments. <clears throat> we'll start at 8 o'clock. Thanks for joining me on a Friday night. You're hanging out with a priest on a Friday night, and it's not a wedding rehearsal. What does that mean? Hello, Kathy. We'll start in a few seconds. All right, it's 8 o'clock. Welcome, everyone. It's uh, Father Bob Gross. Uh, it is uh, 8 o'clock, and we're doing our daily update. Uh, what I want to do is just tell you about today. Today, um, I just want to let you know I, I had a chance to do some, some further formation and development. I don't know if you've ever heard of Bishop Robert Barron. But he has a uh, online community called the Word on Fire Institute, and it has a series of classes that you can take to grow in your faith and to grow in being an evangeliz uh, evangelizer of the gospel. And I decided to sign up for that, and I started taking my first online course. I want to be in the same solidarity with all the students that are taking online courses. So I started a class on Thomas Merton today. And then number two, I started uh, listening to a series of talks on the preaching uh, to grow as a preacher. Uh, Bishop Barron offered four talks. I just got done with the first one about um, the, prim the principles that make an effective preacher. So in the morning, I had a chance to do a little bit of study. Uh, it was really uh, very refreshing to do that. Then we had mass and rosary. And then in the afternoon, I had the privilege to meet with a couple people in spiritual direction, and then I got to meet with an engaged couple tonight. On top of that, we prayed and buried and laid to rest Monica Steinlogge today at Our Lady of Seven Dollars Cemetery. We're going to have a memorial mass for her later when we're able to gather for mass. Um, this morning, when I was thinking about my homily, I got reacquainted with Pope Francis's first document that he gave us as uh, Pope, and that was Evangelium Gaudium. And he has four principles that talk about how we can grow together as societies and communities. And I was looking at these four principles, and I really think they'd be very helpful for our 
president and governor and um, priests and pastors and bishops and local community members and just these undergirding undergirding principles that help us to bring people together. And all I want to do is just kind of to share them with you and have you guys start kind of chewing on them a little bit. They're in the post, and I want to just go over them just briefly with all of you. The first is this, time is greater than space. Time is greater than space. And it's the belief that many times in life we live the opposite, that space is greater than time. And one of the things that happens is that we rush to decisions without allowing God to reveal a direction or an answer. And a lot of times we're worse off than we were at the beginning of a, of a difficulty. I'll give you an example. There are so many people that want to reopen society. Um, it's been tough. I can see the toll that this pandemic is taking on people. But this principle allows us to see that time is greater than space. We're not quite there of what we should be doing. There's indications of where we should go in. There's indications of what we're learning about the coronavirus, but we're not quite there yet. The more time we give with patience, the more God can reveal the direction that we're supposed to have. So we should never rush to make important decisions in life. We want to make important decisions in our lives from freedom and discernment and prayer and seeking the counsel of other people. If we're given ourselves the opportunity to have time to make those important decisions, most of the time those decisions work a lot better. Number two, unity prevails over conflict. I think people live from the opposite way, that conflict prevails over unity. But the Lord is the one Lord of all. Ultimately, the Holy Spirit does conquer over the divisions that happen within all of us. But we have to let those, let the unity of the Holy Spirit to overcome our, our, our difficulties. That's why the work of reconciliation, the work of forgiveness, has to be a constant work day in and day out for every Christian. That's why it's not either us or them, us versus them, that versus we are all part of this together. That's why solidarity is such an important principle within the Christian Catholic moral tradition. We are united to one another, even though there are things that keep us divided. Ultimately, we are fellow brothers and sisters in Christ and in the human race. Do we think about that enough in our lives? And I think many times we don't. We try to make ourselves different than other people, and we end up in conflict with one another. But in the end, unity prevails over conflict. Here's the third principle. Realities are more important than ideas. Realities are more important than ideas. Is it important to think? Is it important to pursue the intellectual life? Yes, but they must have ultimately concrete expression within our lives. You just don't want to be a person of ideas and then don't have any practical sense. And you don't want to only have practical sense without having the giftedness of the intellectual life. That's why our Catholic faith is smart. It's intellectual, but at the same time, it speaks to the concrete struggles that people have in their lives. Reality, the reality of what people are going through, that is what's supposed to inform the ideas in our reflection. Here's the last one. The whole is greater than the parts. Sometimes we have the tendency to look at only at the parts instead of the whole. Uh, that's why we always have to look at where are our individual actions heading towards the greater goal, the greater whole, right? So I was made to praise, reverence, and serve God our Lord. You were made to praise, reverence, and serve God our, our Lord. Everything has to be um, serving that whole, that goal. Don't get overly focused on the parts sometimes because then we lose the prize that we're living for. Like, for example, I think a common example of how this plays out in people is that people live to work instead of working to live, right? You can see that there are just some people that are just driven by work. But why? What's the purpose behind that? Is it to truly provide for their family, to be in relationship with their family? Or are they slaves 
to that particular part of their lives instead of looking at the whole. That's why first principles that I talked about earlier are so important for us. We have to be rooted in our first principles in order to grow. So this might sound kind of philosophical and maybe serious as compared to last night. But these are four principles that Pope Francis speaks of that can really help us understand the reality that we're in. Time is greater than space. Give ourselves time to see clearly to make a decision. Unity prevail, prevails over conflict. The Holy Spirit, if we are instruments of his spirit, will always help us overcome the differences that we have with one another. Realities are more important than ideas. It's important to have an idea, but it must be rooted in reality if we really want to see the importance of that idea. And lastly, the whole is greater than the part. Don't get lost in the weeds. Make sure you're keeping your eye on the prize of the goal of life, which is to praise, reverence, and serve God our Lord. Um, so anyway, just wanted to share that with all of you. And um, I put the link for Evangelium Gaudi in there. And I just wanted to, to, to share that with you tonight. Uh, so tomorrow uh, is Saturday. Uh, Saturday is the day that I actually am going to start taking uh, a day off from live stream. So tomorrow I won't have any live stream masses or rosaries or anything. And I'm also not going to have an update at 8 p.m. I may have a written one, but it won't be one for tomorrow. So I hope all of you have a good day on Saturday. And just remember on Sunday we're going to have uh, – Sunday Mass, the third Sunday of Easter, 9.30 Rosary with Adoration and 10 o'clock Mass. We're going to have some uh, music again. We've made a commitment to have music every Sunday, so it feels as much as possible like a parish Sunday Mass. Hope you can join us. Tomorrow, Father Aaron Jungi uh, will have Mass at 10, I believe. And then Father Jacob Rouse, I think, has Mass at 4 p.m. on Saturdays. Uh, so those uh, opportunities for live stream mass tomorrow. I think that's all she wrote. And uh, thank you so much for joining me. Hope it makes sense. I got a little uh, philosophical with you today. But read that and read uh, how the Holy Father describes these principles. And um, I hope they help you. Let's give space for the Holy Spirit to be with us, to lead us, and to guide us. That time is greater than space that unity prevails over conflict, realities are more important than ideas, and lastly, the whole is greater than the parts. Let's remember that, maybe reflect on that. Let those principles guide us as we pray and be instruments of the kingdom of God in this world. Let's close with a prayer, and I'll send you off to your evening. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you that you are the Lord of all. We pray that you guide us in the ways of trust and goodness. And that as we trust you, that that trust from our, that trust from our hearts may console your heart, Lord. Please be with us tonight and protect us from the evil one that we may rise to praise and thank you for another day. Be with all those who are lonely, struggling, overwhelmed. Give them the consolation of your Holy Spirit. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you this night, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. To answer your question, Teresa, I have not figured out the trophy. We're doing some investigation on that. So God bless you all. I hope all of you have a very nice night. Thanks for hanging out with me on a Friday night with your priest. Bye-bye.